Hi, I made a video about the tips and tricks that you can apply when you're playing Misty and then somebody asked me if I could uh, also come up with a video with some tips for improvising when you're playing a tune such as Misty. Since uh, Misty is a tune that uh, many people like, I'll uh, now show you two things where I would start when I'm uh, working on improvisation and then in part two I'll teach you eight patterns and licks that you can apply when you're playing Misty. So let's begin. On the screen now you see the outline of this lesson, so we're going to speak about uh, something I think is important and familiarize uh, with the tune that you're working on. And uh, then I'm going to teach you some uh, specific patterns that I hope you like. Some of them are easy to play, some of them are hard to play. So uh, I think I've got something for all of you. Now let's speak about the, the first thing first is what is important before you start working on improvisation. There are three things I always take into consideration when I practice improvisation. The first thing is that I consider all of the core elements at all times. And uh, what are the core elements? I said it before, it's the melody, the harmony, the rhythm and the dynamics. Be aware of all of the core elements when you're practicing improvisation. Of course, we're going to improvise and come up with a new melody on the spot. Uh, we all do that when we're improvising, right? But we should always listen to how we are playing rhythmically and uh, how is the dynamic like and of course what you're doing with the harmony as well. Second thing I would uh, think about is uh, that I would normalize overwhelm. Because when you are growing, you are going to feel overwhelmed, especially when you work on improvisation, because the possibilities are endless. That's why many often keep playing the same old stuff without challenging themselves, and they often procrastinate and don't practice on a consistent basis. Since growth is uncomfortable, right? But if you don't challenge yourself, you will not grow and life is short, so there is no time to lose. So my tip is to get used to or normalize feeling overwhelmed and see it as a sign that you are growing your abilities to play better and new things. The third thing is to set boundaries or limits before you begin, as I said, there are infinite number of things that you can do, so it's smart to work within some limits or boundaries. So what is a boundary or restriction in this context? So boundaries is a restriction that you put on yourself while you practice improvisation. And it's not something that you do when you perform. And one example of a boundary is uh, when you play Misty, you can limit yourself to improvise while you play only on the white keys. This is just, of course, uh, a funny example. It's not so useful, but it can be very fun to do. But more useful limits or boundaries that you can do is to play Misty as a ballad. Uh, you say that uh, you're going to keep it simple and you don't want to swing. And the left hand is going to play a uh, stride piano. So those are different examples of boundaries or limits that you can put before you get started working on improvisation. And then I would suggest that you apply the all in principle. And that is to stay with one idea for a long time. And then you go all in on that idea. For example, if you're practicing a lick or a pattern, now you go all in on that. In other words, you try to apply it as often as you can everywhere you make it fit. And I'll show you example of that soon. Again, apply all of this when you are practicing. It's very smart to uh, set some boundaries and uh, put restrictions on ourselves and focus on just a few elements as we are practicing. Now let's move on to the next one. And that is to familiarize the five things we usually do when we are improvising is to play new melodies uh, when we're improvising, right? So we're using the scale notes and playing new melodies within the scales. Second thing is that we are playing the chords and we're often playing arpeggios. The third thing is that we are playing patterns. The fifth thing is that we're playing licks and runs. And what is the difference between a pattern, lick and run? Well, a pattern is relatively easy to play anywhere and lick is something that you have uh, rehearsed that are possible to transpose, but maybe not that easy to transpose. And it fits in a specific context, for example, a 251 progression. A run is similar to a lick, but it's more like a party trick. I, always, I see it more like a party trick. It's something that may work well in one key, but it's hard to transpose. For example, if I play this, It's fairly easy to play um, even fast if you play it like I did now. Now I was playing 4, 3, 2, 1. And then just moving up and playing around this black key and this black key and this black key. So. That's typical run. Now this is hard to play if I move it up a half step. So if I play like this now. Starting on F.
is a lot harder to play. You can try it for yourself and you can figure out it's very, way harder to play it in the upper half step. Now let's move on and speak about uh, what is my approach for learning a jazz standard. And the first step I would do, and this is what I always do, is that I listen a lot to the tune before I start. So multiple recordings of various jazz players that can help you a lot. Ideally, you should uh, copy someone who can play the tune in an aspiring way to you. And uh, now you don't need to understand what is going on. I've done that many times. I don't understand everything in great detail. I don't un understand the theory or the names of the scales they're using or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's about learning the language and try to uh, adapt. And it's also sometimes called modeling because now you are trying to uh, sound like somebody else. Uh, in the process of learning how to play jazz, you have to also learn how to copy others which I teach a lot in the Jasmine Step Step course, it is very, very essential. Now, moving on to what are we up to when we are working on the improvisation? And I see it as something, uh, it's a term called uh, reductionism. And what is reductionism? I asked ChatGPT, so um, it can explain for you. Explain it in one sentence as if I was 12 years of age. And GPT said, reductionism is the idea that big complex things can be understood by breaking them down into their smaller, simpler parts. In our case, we're playing music, we're playing jazz piano, and now we're going to play uh, Misty as uh, a jazz pianist, right? What do we need to understand to play Misty as a jazz pianist? The structure and the builder blocks of the tune. And we do that within the boundaries that we have set. So then, and these are the first steps that I would apply when I would uh, play a tune such as uh, Misty or any other jazz standard that I want to learn. I would start by playing uh, or studying the chord changes so i would play through the various chord changes using various voicings that i know so for example um, e flat major seven to b flat minor seven playing through the various chord changes straightforward right but then you apply uh, various uh, voicings that you might know and so on and so forth. Then you should also look for patterns that you happen to know, for example, 2-5 progressions or 2-5-1 progressions. If you have a look at Misty, you can see that the, all of these are now 2-5 progressions and all of these are 2-5-1 progressions. And now I'm only speaking about the A section, which is uh, one of my boundaries for, uh, for this lesson. That's what I would do. Look for the chords, look for the structure in the chord changes. And then I would go and uh, learn all of the scales that I could use in the tune. So now I would play uh, the scales throughout the tune. In this case, Misty, I would just play the E flat scale. And when I go to uh, the next chord, I would just continue the E flat scale. And you can change to different scales um, when you do this exercise. It's an exercise where you go all the way up, all the way down and playing in various tempos. And I've explained that in great detail in this video, so you can check that out for yourself. So that's what I would do. And then I would go to uh, the next thing is to play triads throughout the scales. And that's something I also explained in this lesson. So now, basically, what you do is to play various chords that will fit in within the scales. So E flat scale can use this chord, for example, and then you try to play that up and down. Within the E flat scale, if that makes sense. Once I know the chords, I will try to add various arpeggios. So you have basic arpeggios where you have no altered notes. For example, if you play the B flat seven, you play the B flat arpeggio. So I would break that up and go through all of the chords and do that. And then I would uh, try to look for more advanced arpeggios. So for example, a B flat, you could also play the G. So now you have the flat nine and then you have the 13, right? So then I would play And also down a half step, you can do that. Make sure that you uh, hit the right keys, not like I did now. And then what I would do is to go to the next step is to apply various patterns, licks and runs. For example, the one, two, three pattern where you play just uh, like this.
Now I'm just playing throughout the scale, E flat scale, playing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I will do that uh, similarly on all of the different chords. This is just one example, right? And now I'll uh, teach you a lot of patterns, so stay tuned for that. Now, let's speak about some uh, patterns and licks that you can actually apply. These are just examples, all of these, but uh, I've labeled them as easy, medium, and hard. So the hard ones are meant for those with a lot of experience. And uh, if you are a beginner, you can ignore the hard ones completely. If you're a total beginner, you will find the easy ones to be a little bit too challenging for you and uh, just be kind to yourself and think that, okay, this is how I would like to be able to play one day, maybe. And you can also download the PDF file. I've made a PDF file for you. So you can find a link to that down below. That's for free. And also the left hand, let's speak about that before we get started, because uh, when you play a uh, stride piano, you're jumping from left to right. So normally we do like this. Now I'm playing uh, one and 10 and one and five sometimes, and one and seven sometimes, depending on uh, how you would like it to sound. But instead of jumping back and forth like I did now, I like to do like this. I'm playing uh, on the downbeat, I'm playing the tenth, and then I'm just using different inversions of the E flat major seventh chord. I have also made another video that I called Play Misty like this instead. So uh, there I show you some examples that you can apply. Then let's now speak about the pattern one, two, three. So pattern one, this example you can use in the very beginning where the melody goes like this. And the pattern looks like this. Let's have a look. So you play like this. Right. So the point now is to play two notes. Don't get too caught up in which notes we are playing. So think of it as if you are learning a language. And this is now like a new phrase in the foreign language that you're learning, right? So try to apply this new phrase as many places as you can. So if I learn this phrase, I would try to deconstruct that and try to apply that as many places as I could. For example, I could play like this. And so on and so forth. So you can go through the whole piece and just play this line if you want. That's how I would do it. And this is the principle of going all in. That's why I call it the all in principle, because now you're going all in. The next thing we should have a look at is that you should also add some scale notes as you are playing, because otherwise it's getting a little bit boring if you're just going to play the patterns, right? So you can do it like this. Now I was playing the A flat scale and uh, I would do that to climb up here, right? To play the next phrase, if I would play this over and over. Now I was playing the G flat scale, right? So this is based on the scale to one principle. I made a video about that also, so you can check that out. Now let's have a look at the second pattern. It's basically just a G minor chord and played as an arpeggio. And the G minor chord, of course, fits with the E flat major seven, right? So instead of playing it uh, descending like I did now, you now go a little bit down and then up. So that's the pattern. You may find that to be a little bit harder, but it sounds really nice if you do it, uh, for example, at the beginning of Misty. Where you play the D over E flat. Now, let's move on to the next pattern, and that is pattern three. And this is uh, labeled as easy because uh, I hope it is for you. We can play the G minor chord again, and now you play So, that 
that's a cool little uh, trick to add. And then I would go and play that as much as I could throughout the tune. Try to be flexible with the rhythm. You don't have to play it like I did now all the time. You can do like this. Once you know how to play three patterns, what I would do is to uh, play through Misty and try to apply all of the patterns and just vary between those three. So that's how I would play it. Ideally, I should have some more time, right, to uh, play this uh, over and over and over, and that will develop your language so that you can uh, insert these three elements many places. Now, let's move on to uh, a little fun lick. This is a little bit uh, for more advanced players, but uh, let me show you how it works. I have now rearranged some of the tune. So instead of playing You are changing now a few of the chords, so let me play the same thing now. So here I will play a E flat with G in the bass. You can play it like this. And then go down to the diminished chord. So now it's going to be a G flat diminished. And on that G minor 7, instead of playing that G minor 7, you keep a pedal note of that B flat and then you play like this. All right, now let's have a look at the lick. And this is a little bit uh, for uh, the advanced players, as I said. Uh, now you play. I'm now playing it very slow. And then you play. Let me try to do that a little bit uh, faster now. And let's move on now to the next one. And uh, this is pattern five, and that's based on the principles I taught in this video. So you should check that out. And this pattern you can add on all of the minor chords. I think it's more obvious to play it on the A flat uh, minor seven for some reason. And then once you do, you can ignore the D flat seven. And now we're gonna play the G flat scale or the chords within the G flat scale. But we're going to play it uh, in a different way. So we're going to play it as six tuplets like this. And then you can end on the next chord, right? Or E flat. But it should be a little bit faster. Let's have a look at the next pattern, which can both be uh, hard and easy. Let's have a look at the easy version first. Now you play the pentatonic scale, the G flat pentatonic scale. And what I do is uh, I play like this. So it's three, two, one, two, one, three, two, one, and then two. And this is uh, something that you can play when you go to the A flat minor seventh chord in Misty. If you're a more advanced player, you can play it uh, twice as fast and uh, on a longer span. So start up here.
and then you go like that. And up to speed. Now let's move on to the next one, which is also for the advanced players. And this is one of my favorite patterns. And uh, I like to add it here when you play the F minor seven in the end. And what you do is that you play uh, the F minor first, and then you go up a half step. At the ending, you can uh, choose to play the G or the F-flat. I uh, like to vary those. All right, so that's the slow version. Now let's play it up to speed. And also the ending chord, you can play a 10th if you want, or just a 7th like I did now. Uh, whatever is convenient for you. Once you know how to play this lick in multiple places, what you can do is to transpose it around your keyboard. I would do that in this case, but uh, I would not uh, do it uh, on all the things I learn because that's uh, simply too much work. I don't believe that you should uh, have to learn everything in all the 12 keys. Most of the time, it's a waste of time, in my opinion. But in this case, I would try to insert this same idea, if I like it, to multiple places. So, for example, if you play now from the start and then the first chord is uh, B flat minus seven to E flat seven, right? So here you can add this if you can be able to transfer it around. What I suggest that you do is uh, to learn it so well by ear that you will hear which keys will fit. In this case... And then the next chord is an A minus 7. And here you can also add the same lick. It starts up a half step again. And you may find out that you'll have to tweak the lick a little bit. So now I was ending on the fifth of that E flat major seventh chord. And about the remaining two, those are the same as uh, the first one. So in this case, I would have to learn this uh, lick three times if I would be able to play it throughout Misty. Now let's move on to the last lick or pattern. This is supposed to be a little bit easier. So what you do is you play. That's uh, six tuplets, and uh, ideally it should go a little bit faster, of course, but uh, you try to play it slow and then you can increase the speed. Again, you can add this to all of the 251 progressions if you like it. So in this case, what I should suggest that you do is to find the PDF file and uh, then you can go through it yourself and you transpose around your keyboard whatever ideas you like and you can ignore the rest. That's how I would. It. So that's it for this little uh, tutorial. You can, of course, uh, download uh, the PDF file uh, for this lesson with all the patterns and some uh, comments. It's all for free. The link to that is uh, down below. Remember now to both push yourself and to be kind to yourself if you don't make it right away. Believe me, if uh, some of what I've showed you today was uh, above your head, I know exactly how that feels like. So take your time, but remember to practice consistently and uh, push yourself to do something different. And remember to check out this video if you haven't already, and uh, there you can learn some more additional tips. I will be back now soon with more jazz piano related content for you. So remember to hit the like button, subscribe and share this video if you like it. More than anything else, take care of your music and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. -bye.